What's up guys, my name's Brandon, and today Apple released iOS 26 Beta 5 to registered developers and soon to public beta testers. Now along with this iOS release, we also got the fifth beta for iPadOS 26, watchOS 26, macOS 26 Tahoe, tvOS 26, and HomePod 26, along with VisionOS 26 Beta 5. But of course, in this video, we are talking all about iOS 26 Beta 5, and that starts with the size of this update because I was on beta four before this and you can see the size on my 16 pro max here is 11.31 gigabytes now that download finished very quickly so don't be you know too scared of that size but that is a rather large size for an update so let's go and check out the build number for this new build here so if we head into our about settings right here you can see that we have 23 a 5308g that is the latest build here for beta 5 so a G at the end of the build number. And if we go back and go down to the modem firmware, that is 2.04. 0.02. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 26 beta 5? And the first thing is something you'll actually notice before you even fully unlock your device for the first time after completing this install. And that's because we have a very bouncy animation for the keypad after you install to put in your passcode right here. So you can see somebody in the Apple Den Discord server sent over this video of what that looks like. And you'll actually notice that beta 5 has more animated animations. If if you will so more bouncy animations throughout the os so it's not just on the lock screen also if we go into the control center right here take a look at beta 4 on the left beta 5 on the right so if we go up and down right here take a look at this little box and just look at the bouncy effect on beta 5 compared to beta 4. So it's very apparent when you see it side by side, but even if you don't, you will notice it right away that the animations just feel a little bit bouncier, a little bit more alive than they did beforehand. And there's even a change in the animations when you lock your device. So at beta 4 right here, if I lock my device, you can see that it just goes black. But now in beta 5, if we lock our device, take a look at how the app icons kind of look like they're coming at us when I lock my device. So I'll just do it right here. You can see the icons come like at us and before it locks. It's very subtle, it's very quick, but that is something new where the app icons just kind of come forward. It did not do that in beta four. Now at first glance, liquid glass is pretty much exactly the same on beta five as it was on beta four. When you just look in like the photos application and control center and things like that, it looks about the same. However, when you get more precise with it, specifically the menu down here, you will see some differences in beta four and beta five because beta five is more specific. It's more precise with the liquid glass animation. So let me show you what I mean. So just take a look at the glyph icons down at the bottom as I move closer. So you'll see in beta four, it selects recents right there. It turns it blue before I'm even fully on it. So like right once I get a little bit on it, it turns blue. Whereas in beta five, it waits a little bit. It's a lot more precise. And you can see the whole thing doesn't turn blue. It kind of just goes subtly before fully changing to blue to select it. So before it would just select it again, really small details, but these are the things that I notice when I update and I try to see, you know, what's new. So liquid glass, and you'll see this throughout as well. I won't show you every area, but you can see even with browse right here, only half of it's blue. Whereas before actually it's like a bug here in beta four, it doesn't even select it at all. But if it did, it would just be all blue like it is on recents over there. So that's what you'll see throughout beta five liquid glass, a lot more precise now, and it just looks better as well. It just looks more refined than it has before. Heading into the photos application, if you take a look at the show summary down here, really all the buttons are a little bit easier to read now. So they're less frosted, I guess you can say, than beta four. So maybe there is a little bit of a difference with liquid glass here. I can just read show summary better on beta five than I could in beta four. Now, if we go into an actual wallpaper, take a look up top at the date so the date before it kind of just hovered, there was nothing special to it. But now in beta five, we have a little liquid glass style background behind it. And also when we tap on the share button down here to go into the share sheet, you'll notice that we have a brand new airdrop icon. So the airdrop icon before looked like this in beta four and pretty much every previous version, even iOS 18. But now we have a brand new airdrop icon here in iOS 26 beta five. So what do you guys think? Do you like this new airdrop icon better? than the previous one, or do you not like it as much as what we had before? And what's interesting is that this only shows up in the share sheet. So this does not show up in the settings 
or in the control center. So maybe Apple is just testing it out before putting it everywhere. Now, if you guys remember in beta four, Apple changed the scrolling direction for the mode selector in the camera application. So before, when you put your finger to the right, it would go left. Now, when you put your finger to the right, it goes right. And a lot of people did not like that. Well, thankfully in beta five, there's actually a new toggle to change that. So if you go into your camera settings, go all the way down to the bottom, we have a brand new option for mode switching called classic mode switching. So this reverses the scroll direction of mode switching. So now if you turn that on and go over here, you can see that it's back to the old style that a lot of people missed in beta four. When you take a screenshot in beta five, you'll notice that we have a new animated glyph icon down at the bottom to the left of highlight to search down here. So basically just giving us more of a pointer as to what we can actually do with the new visual intelligence feature that's built into screenshots. iOS 26 beta five also brings a new low battery alert from the dynamic island so you can see that this is a new look here and it also comes from the dynamic island and it says 10 percent battery tap to turn on low power mode and you can see that it kind of has a little animation there as well and speaking of battery you might also see this new notification once you install 26 beta 5 on your device so it says adaptive power iPhone is adjusting performance to help extend your battery life. So if you have adaptive power turned on, you might see this notification. I did not get it on my device. Thankfully, somebody in the Apple Den Discord server did. So they sent this to me over there. They put it in the chat over there. But that is something new if you do have that enabled in your settings. In the music application, we do have one noticeable change and also a new splash screen here. So first off, we have the splash screen. So it shows auto mix, lyrics, translation, and pronunciation, pin music, and also replay. So all those are not new features, but this splash screen is new as of beta five. Now the new feature is if we go into here and I'll just show you beta four as an example as well. So you can actually see it right away right here. So notice how the bottom menu bar in beta four, it would stay up right there where it shows home, new radio and library. It would show up basically until you scroll down, but then right when you started scrolling up again, it would reappear. Well now in beta five, that has changed. So now when you start scrolling up, it does not reappear until you get to the very top and then it shows the full tab bar. So this is actually something I like better because in beta four, it would get quite annoying to have that constantly popping up and then going back in. It was just too much motion going on, too much going on. So now I like the new behavior where that menu doesn't open up until you get to the very top. We have some changes in the control center in beta five. So if you go ahead and haptic press on your connectivity menu right here and then haptic press on the wide Wi-Fi selector, you'll see a small change here to the glyph icon that shows Wi-Fi because it now shows if it's a protected Wi-Fi network with a password or not. Before, it did not show that little lock. Also, local capture has a new icon. So you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, the last little icon here in my control center, that is for local capture. So we have a brand new glyph icon for that, a very different icon. And also if you haptic press on that, you can see this is where we see the changes as well. So you can see a big version of the glyph icon up there. It says local capture, but you could see that we have a new audio only toggle right there and it says call audio and video will be saved to downloads and before you just simply had a place to save it so it just said save to downloads and that was basically all you had before you started recording so now if you don't want to record video along with the audio you could just do audio only which is great for podcasts in safari if you swipe up to go to your tab view you'll notice that it shrinks after a couple of seconds down there to where it shows private and your tabs so before it would show kind of a preview of the next tab group and it would also make it hard to get to private. So if you have incognito tabs, it would make it hard to kind of get to that. And it would also cut off the name. Now it's easier to see they have private and tabs and you can just move on to the other ones, you know, just like that if you want to, but it shrinks up and makes it easier to go between private and your regular tabs. And if you look closely in the address bar to the left of the URL, we now have a stacking version of the reader icon right there. So the little cross through I, and then also the menu beneath it before they were separated. They were just side by side. Now they're stacked 
to make more room for the actual URL, which I like that change. There's a new game mode notification. So if you go into a game, we'll just go into Subway Surfers and you can see it shows game mode on, access game overlays and a control center. In the weather application, I got a new pop-up that said tap for health information. So that did not show up before for me, but now it did in beta five. There's also a new splash screen for notes. So it shows notes on Apple Watch, an adaptive toolbar and markdown exports and imports. And once again, just like music, those are not new features, but this is a new splash screen. And here's something interesting that was found in the code of iOS 26 beta 5 by Mac rumors and RMP right here. So you can see that it shows the display size for the upcoming Apple Watch Ultra 3. So it looks like that display resolution is going to be 422 by 514. So the current Apple Watch Ultra 2, the one I have right here is 410 by 502. So it will be a little bit bigger. Now, as far as bug fixes go, I would imagine that beta 5 is going to continue squashing a lot of the bugs that we had previously. Previously, I know one of the main ones that a lot of people have been complaining about is the issue with ProMotion. So if you have a Pro device and you were noticing stutter or you were noticing that ProMotion wasn't working as intended, I've seen in the Appleton Discord server, a lot of members in there are talking about the ProMotion bug being fixed. Now, I never had this issue on my device personally, so I cannot confirm that, but that is what a lot of people are saying. So test that out for yourself and you guys let me know in a comment down below if ProMotion has been fixed for you. Now, something that I can confirm is that the animations are a lot smoother and a lot more responsive here in beta 5 compared to beta 4 and previous builds. So not only do we have the more bouncy animations, that's one thing, but also inside of settings. If you go into settings like this and then you go back, you can kind of see a little bit of movement there and just everything seems a little bit faster than it has before on any previous beta. And I was really hoping that I could say that when you have a background in a message thread, that that's more stable and less laggy, but it's really not. So I've still noticed pretty much every single beta has been bad. The first two were the worst, but still with beta five, if you put a background in a group chat, you're still going to notice more lag than if you had no background. So I'm still kind of staying away from this on my main device. Now, taking a look at the release notes here for for beta 5 we do have quite a few resolved issues which is good to see so we have a fix for the add to home screen flow that would fail before so that has been fixed in beta 5 we talked about that in the beta 4 video there's also a fix to the beta 4 bug where it says on an iphone or ipad without a passcode health data might become inaccessible when you reach the power off slider so that was a health kit issue that has been fixed and there's also one down here that's interesting that is for mail and there was a visual bug that's been fixed in beta 5 so it says well in dark mode mail controls may not adjust to content with a light background and then we have quite a few other ones as well that have been fixed here i will leave these release notes down in the description as i always do it's always good to see some of these bug fixes okay so now let's talk about the performance and the battery life with ios 26 beta 5 so i have to say that performance does feel a little bit better than beta 4 just right off the rip so i i base this off of the animations being quicker the animations being more bouncy and more just smooth they feel like you know liquid glass feeling better and more precise just all these small details lead me to believe that performance overall is just a little bit better here in beta 5 which of course i will give you guys my full breakdown my full rundown in my apple weekly episode later on this weekend where i'll tell you after using it for a full week but i can just tell you right off the rip here right off the bat that it does feel better than beta 4 in multiple areas so we'll have to wait and see but so far so good now as far as battery life goes i'm currently sitting at 86 percent you guys have to go back to the beginning of this video and let me know what i started with not the screenshot just when i first started showing new features but you guys have to let me know but that seems pretty good i mean 86 seems like a pretty good percentage to be at so i can't really say if battery life is any better or any worse after just using it for a couple of hours but i will report back to you guys in apple weekly after using it for a week and let you know how battery life is because i'm in desperate need of better battery life my main device is really struggling still on beta 4 with battery life. So I will install beta five on my main device today. And I will let you guys know later this week how battery life is. Now, as far as what to expect next from Apple, I would expect the next public beta. So public beta two to come out pretty soon, most likely within the next day or two, I would expect to see that this week for sure. So I would say most likely in the next 24 hours is when you should see that public beta. Now, as far as the next beta round, like the next beta six and public beta three, we might actually be switching over to a 
weekly release schedule for the first time on iOS 26. So before we've gone at least two weeks in between betas, but now that could be changing after this week. So based on history, Apple does typically switch over to weekly release schedules after the fifth beta. So with that being said, if that's the case, if Apple does continue that, we should see beta six and the next public beta next week on the week of August 11th. And then if we go down a little bit to September, this is when we'll see iOS 26 officially launched to the public. So we're most likely just a little over a month away from seeing iOS 26 launch to everybody worldwide. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, if you did, I would appreciate if you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already subscribed for some reason, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. That's how YouTube ensures that you see all of my videos. Anyways, guys, thanks as always for watching and I'll see you soon.